All right, we're going to get started with the next talk. Um, that is a pretty hard act to follow. Um, it is my pleasure to have to follow that act because they inspire me on a daily basis. Um, so my name is Jory Fleischer. I'm one of the other movement disorders neurologists here at Rush. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about exercise and karate in Parkinson's disease. So these are just briefly my disclosures. The research um, that supports the karate has been supported by Joyce DeMuth and George Harvey. So what do we know about exercise and Parkinson's disease? Can everyone hear me okay, by the way? Okay. All right. So we know exercise improves brain function in many ways. And this is even outside of Parkinson's disease, right? Hopefully every single one of your doctors, no matter whether they are cardiology or your primary care doctor, maybe even your podiatrist, has told you that exercise is good for you. Yes, exercise is good for you, right? And so it improves your heart and lung function, which leads to improved motor function, improved attention, improved cognitive speed, things that all of us want. And in general, aerobic exercise improves attention, executive function, and memory, specifically when it's been studied in healthy older adults. Um, and if the question is, what do you mean by healthy older adults? Um, studies differ on how they define older, sometimes 60, sometimes 65, sometimes 70. I think it's a state of mind. Um, but we know specifically in older populations that exercise really can help with many things. Um, when it's been looked at in folks with Alzheimer's disease, we know that exercise, particularly aerobic exercise, helps memory, helps executive function, so juggling multiple things in your mind, thinking about decisions, and it helps with balance. So how exactly is this happening, right? It sounds a little hand wavy. Exercise is good for you. Go exercise. It helps your brain. There are actually a number of different ways, and it seems like almost every journal article that comes out is proposing a new pathway by which exercise is physically changing your brain. And that's wonderful because it's not just one pathway. There are many things going on. So in animal models of exercise, this is tiny little mice who are given basically mouse version of Parkinson's disease. Those mice who are put on a wheel and forced to run, um, they perform better on cognitive tasks than animals who are not given these, uh, put on the wheel, right? This is lovely. We are not mice on a wheel. So it's a little bit harder to sort of translate all of these things. But what we found is that long-term exercise, particularly long-term running in animal models, leads to increased growth of neurons, actual like increased growth in the brain, um, particularly in the hippocampus. And that's the area that's crucial for memory. It leads to increased release of brain factors that build new connections or synapses. And it leads to increased release of synapse forming proteins. So not only are the brain cells sort of connecting to each other, but they need to connect and they need to be supported in those connections, sort of like have all of the good juices kind of flowing around to make sure that those connections stay. And exercise seems like it promotes the connections and all of that good environment around there. So what do we know about specifically how does exercise improve function in people with PD? So it looks like moderate intensity aerobic exercise, stuff that gets your heart pumping, it gets you sweating. You should be able to get a sentence out but not have a full conversation, okay? And that could be different for everyone. But 45 to 60 minutes at least three times per week shows improvements, especially in executive function. And again, what is executive function? This is not, you know, can you delegate things to, you know, people in the C-suite. Executive function means decision making. It means, you know, how do I do this first and this first? If I have a complex task, what needs to happen in order for something else to happen? And that's a particular area of thinking that can be impaired in people with Parkinson's, and this has been shown to help. There are great studies looking at progressive resistance exercise, so weight training and resistance, that have shown that when people with PD participate for 60 to 90 minutes at a time, twice a week, that leads to improved working memory, executive function, and attention, right? This doesn't mean that you need to go out and be Iron Man, okay? This means starting with small weights, starting with the resistance band, and ideally starting with someone who knows how to guide you in those exercises um, so that you're doing things safely and not harming yourself. And in one of the, the bigger trials to come out, um, which took place here at Rush along with other centers, they studied um, high intensity treadmill exercise, so four days a week, aiming to achieve either 60 to 65% of your max heart rate or 80 to 85%. And they found improved mobility compared with moderate, so the high intensity folks, 
did better than the moderate intensity folks, and everyone did better than the folks who did not do anything at all. So I get asked a lot in clinic, <clears throat> is there something that I can take to slow down the course of my Parkinson's? There is not a pill that we have right now to slow down the course of Parkinson's. All of our medications are symptomatic treatments, meaning they're covering up the symptoms. They're trying to improve quality of life, improve how you're functioning, but none of them so far have been shown to slow down what's going on in the brain underneath, except exercise. Seems like this has the most evidence to say that this is slowing down the course of the disease to the extent that we can. So in big studies, I showed you the animal models, right? But no one is a, is a mouse on a wheel. What about people with PD? When people with PD are looked at and we compare the folks who are lifelong exercisers to the folks who are lifelong couch potatoes, the lifelong exercisers, maybe not surprisingly, do better. But if we especially look at people who've been sort of couch potatoes and then take up exercise, they get moving even after the diagnosis. They do better than the folks who did not take up exercise at all. Right, so it is never too late, okay? That is, that's the main take home. But we do need long-term prospective research to confirm this. But it seems like if you take nothing else away, this is the thing, is that the more you keep moving, the more you will keep moving, right? And so any kind of movement seems like good movement. So from that, that treadmill study that I mentioned, the SPARK study, what they found, again, is that people who exercise at high intensity did a little bit better. Let's see if we've got... Nope. Um, so the farthest left um, is the maximum heart rate folks. And so they had a, a slight improvement in their Parkinson's disease rating scale compared to the uh, moderate folks, and especially compared to folks who are not necessarily doing exercise at all. So this is a, the other question besides maybe medical marijuana. This is the second question that I get asked most is, but what's, okay, that's nice that I'm supposed to exercise. And, and it's nice that you're saying like all these things are good, but really like, What's the best one, right? The best one is the one you'll do, right? Whatever that is, honestly, I am thrilled and inspired and amazed by my karate, the students and our instructors and all of that. But if you are sitting there and going, that's lovely, but there's no way I'm ever doing that. That's okay. But find something that you will, right? And maybe that's a treadmill. Maybe that's swimming or water aerobics. Maybe that's walking your dog vigorously or scheduling time with the grandkids and chasing them around and really making an effort out of, you know, hide and seek as an aerobic activity. Fine. Whatever it is that gets you moving, that's great. It's the thing that keeps you moving. So, so as just as much as we have a prescription for the various medications in terms of how much and how often, right, this is really, as far as we know today, what the prescription for exercise should be is at least, at least a total of 150 minutes per week with your heart rate elevated, sweating, and enough to feel fatigued, but not exhausted and not in pain. Do you need to go out tomorrow if you have been doing zero minutes of exercise a week and aim for 150? No, you will be miserable and you will hate me. That is not the goal. The goal is aim for 10 this week right? Aim for 20 next week. And it doesn't need to be, you know, 30 minutes, five times a week. It could be 10 minutes here, 10 minutes, you know, between lunch, 10 minutes walking around in the evening, something, starting somewhere and building up to that 150 minutes or more is hugely helpful. So um, this, this is directly what happened, um, is if you have an idea, if you are thinking about, well, you know, there's this exercise that I used to do or something that I heard of, is this good? Um, so a patient of mine came to me and said, so I'm doing all the things. I'm doing yoga, I'm doing Pilates, I'm doing aerobics, I'm doing weight training, and I've heard about all this boxing, I'm doing boxing. What about karate? Has anyone looked at karate for Parkinson's disease? And at first it sounded a little bit out there, I hadn't seen anything, and then I got to thinking about it and thought, well, Okay, it has the balance and the core strength and the fast movements and these large amplitude movements that you saw. There may be something here. So um, we started our study called Kick Out PD. So most studies and grants, they're supposed to have a catchy acronym, right? So this stands for um, kinematic interve karate intervention to change kinematic outcomes in Parkinson's disease. We're very fancy. We're terrible at parties. Um, so Kick Out PD, we launched last summer. It was just 10 weeks of our folks going to karate classes twice a week for those 10 weeks. 
And these were specific um, karate classes designed for people with Parkinson's disease. Um, and they were adapted to be aware of the things that can go on with Parkinson's disease, but these were not in any way watered down, dumbed down kind of classes. This is, this is the real deal, um, just keeping Parkinson's disease in mind. And we've had the most amazing partners with Fonseca Martial Arts and the instructors. Um, and so this was for people with Parkinson's disease, hone in yard stages one through three, which means sort of early to middle stage disease. So people could have some trouble with their balance. They could be falling. And what we wanted to know was basically, if we build it, will they come? Um, and if we build it, will they stay? Will they keep coming? So what would, the, what would the dropout rate look like? What would attendance look like? And then secondarily, does this help people? Will we start to see a signal? So we wanted to look at mobility. We wanted to look at anxiety and depression because there's some evidence that anxiety and depression can get much better with exercise, including in Parkinson's disease. We also looked at attention and concentration. And finally, we looked at quality of life and global impression of change, meaning, hey, compared to 10 weeks ago, do you feel better? Do you feel a lot better? Do you feel about the same? So here's what we found. So this was, again, a small study. We did not have a control group, um, but we looked at, of our folks, we enrolled 19 people. 15 out of 19 completed the study. Um, and our attendance, the adherence, was 87%. So twice a week classes, people went 87% of the time, which for an exercise intervention is pretty darn good. Um, who did we enroll? Um, so 53% women. And I put this on here because there's, there's one small study um, of karate that came before this that was published out of Germany. Um, and our good colleagues in Germany, their uh, study design was they had a dance class for Parkinson's and a karate class for Parkinson's, and you could enroll in one or nothing. And they compared the folks who enrolled in karate to the folks who enrolled in dance to the folks who decided, nah. Right? And not surprisingly, the folks who enrolled in something did better than the folks who enrolled in nothing. Um, and they said, aha, we had more men enroll in karate and more women enroll in dance. And thus, karate will be a wonderful intervention for men with Parkinson's disease. I think you can see from our students who are up here that this is not a men-only thing um, and very empowering. And that's, that's what our initial results showed, is that 53% of our students were women. The median age was 68, but we had quite the range. And on average, our folks had um, been living with their Parkinson's for about six years, but our range was anywhere from two to 20 years of Parkinson's disease. And the vast majority of folks were at hone in yard stage two, meaning they have symptoms on both sides of the body, but not necessarily impairing their posture or balance yet. So what did we find? The take home point, aside from the fact that people came and they kept coming and they kept going to classes and sticking with it was something that we were very surprised and very cautiously optimistic to see, which is that when we asked about quality of life using a validated scale, so a particular eight question survey that gets at different things that impact people's quality of life in Parkinson's disease, over just 10 weeks, we found a significant improvement in quality of life compared to those folks baseline. Also, when we asked people sort of on a scale of one to seven, one being I'm the same as I was 10 weeks ago or I'm worse, and seven being, I am considerably better and this has made all the difference. 87% of people endorsed feeling moderately or considerably better. We asked people on day one before they started classes, what do you hope to get out of this? Like, what are you, what are you coming into karate expecting? And we just had them write that down. And then after they'd gone through the 10 weeks, we gave them back their original goal and said, do you feel like you've achieved that? And 100% of people felt that they had achieved their own personal goal for the classes. 100% say they'd recommend it to a friend with Parkinson's. Um, and 100% intended to continue. We also did some focus groups to ask, what are we not asking about? What did we not think to ask about? And one of the things that I think has been most meaningful and most exciting for us was the sense of camaraderie and shared experience. And I think you can get this with a lot of different ways of getting together with other people with you know, the same condition. Um, but I think we really heard that resonate with our participants, was knowing that they were in a safe space where everyone else around them has the same diagnosis and everyone's Parkinson's is different, but they all sort of had the understanding of this is a safe space for me to be. Um, someone said, you know, I felt like I could sort of check my Parkinson's at the door and just go on and be in class. And I think that's really exciting. Um, so we found a positive effect on overall well-being. People were really, really um, complimentary of the individualized attention and have all of the amazing 
um, words to say about the instructors. They felt treated like others. They felt that they could overcome their limitations. And importantly, they felt like they were incorporating these lessons into their everyday life. So this is based on just snippets of what individual folks said, um, but very exciting, and we're following up on that. So let's see if this will run. Do we know how to get this to run? No. Anyone know? Kimberly, anyone know if we can make the documentary run? Or not? Well, hold on. Let's see if this works. Oh. Hey. So we partnered with the documentary film well, nature. So I'm here participating in a research study for Parkinson's, and hopefully um, we'll discover that karate um, will help keep people with Parkinson's fluid and deteriorate degenerative effects of Parkinson's. And coming to my first night of karate, I have no experience or any knowledge about what I'm about to uh, get myself into, but I fear I will be yet another experience in learning something about humility. My only preconception of karate is the karate kid movie where we do that sound like soft. <laughs> The change over the two months is primarily with regard to balance. I notice that my balance is much better. I'm looser. One of the problems that I've had is a slowness in movement, and this has helped improve on that considerably. I didn't really believe in the, 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 the chance of a significant change, but significant change has, has occurred for me. I was surprised at the, at the level of, of uh, improvement, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience to, to be with all of the, 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 the wonderful people who have, who have taught us. It's, it's, just, it's just a remarkable environment here. Started the kick out PD karate program just about 10 weeks ago. So this is our, our last week. And it's just been an amazing experience. Sensei Salgado has just done a, a wonderful job with the classes. I've really enjoyed working alongside him and seeing the, uh, the improvement that all of the students have made. One of the questions that I get asked the most is, what can I do? How do I slow this down? How do I stop this disease? And we don't have a medication that slows us down or stops it. The one thing that we know seems to slow down the course of Parkinson's is exercise. The idea for this study really came about from a patient saying, I have this idea, I have this connection to karate. Has anyone looked at karate for Parkinson's disease? And we looked to the literature and no, there wasn't really much there. And so we got this together and said, you know, there, there might be something to this. It's like a support group. I mean, we are all people with the same illness, so we understand each other. When you have trouble getting up off the floor, nobody's standing there staring at you like, why can't you get up? It's much more positive. So, um, again, we were really cautiously optimistic about this, but the, the scientist in me says, well, it's a very small study. It's 10 weeks. There's no control arm. You know, how much stock do we put in this? Um, so we decided we would do the next best step, which is scientifically we're doing a randomized controlled trial. And it's bigger, and we're looking at, you know, more intense things, and it's longer. So we started phase two. Um, folks enrolled in March, I believe. Um, 
and the design of it um, is basically that we people came in, they did their baseline visit, so we looked at all the tappies and the clappies and the wiggles and the walking and everything that you usually do when you go to the doctor's office for your Parkinson's. We asked questions about quality of life and depression and anxiety and probably way too many questions. And then we partnered with some of our colleagues in physical therapy who have the gate lab. And so um, people got hooked up to all the little sensors and we watched sort of how they're walking and how they're turning and really nuanced things about walking and balance and mobility so that we can hopefully detect if there is truly a change. And after that, um, we randomized people to either starting karate classes immediately for six months or being on the wait list for six months and encouraging them to do whatever exercise they're usually doing or more, right? And then they will come back for their six month visit. We're coming up on that in the next month. And then all those folks who are on the wait list enter karate classes finally um, for the next six months. And the folks who are in the first six months, we hope will choose to continue. And what we wanna look at is how many of those folks choose to continue um, when it's sort of the real world test of, all right, now the study is no longer paying for the karate classes. If you were on your own you know, to do this, would you keep up with it, right? And so we're looking at that and then we'll measure folks at 12 months to see what has changed, what has stayed the same, what's gotten better, has anything gotten worse? Right? And what does this actually mean? Because we want to know moving forward, is this you know, the same as other forms of exercise? Is it better? Is it worse? How is it different? And who is the right person you know, for this type of exercise? So with that, I think I have maybe two minutes left. Um, I thought if you have questions for me, I'm happy to field them, but I thought it might be helpful to do a quick Q&A for five minutes, maybe with Sensei Salgado, Sensei Fonseca, and maybe one or two of the students. If people want to come up, if you want to ask them, they can answer far better than I can probably. Thank you. All right, any questions for karate instructors, for participants? I think it's a good idea that they, they can talk with our students and you can listen uh, the experience. Please sit down, sit down before you find this. Sorry, and I'm being told that we have a panel coming up, so we probably have like two minutes for questions, and then we'll do more questions. Let me just say that I was one of the people that said, there's no way I can do this. So I, I was thinking, I'm not, I just can't do it. I can't kick. I can't pivot. Well, now I can do all those things. So my message to you is don't give up. You can do a lot more than you think you can do. This exercise is really important, and... It's, it's been a great experience. I would echo that. And if you get the camaraderie of a support group with exercise, you're killing two birds with one stone. Anybody have any questions? Issa. Definitely build up a sweat. <laughs> I find that it helps balance a lot more in cardio. I like the balance aspect and I like the memory aspect. And you'll see later, I think, that you have to learn kata, which are patterns. So not only do you have to remember things, you have to tell your body to move in a pattern that you have to remember. So you got two things going. You got movement and memory. And then many of us uh, are compromised on one side, but in karate you're using both sides. So you're using the, you know, both sides of the body. And as far as the kata, uh, sometimes it's difficult to string together a series of movements. I couldn't line dance, <laughs> but I can do a kata. And if you do it wrong, there's no punishment. Do you do it wrong as a monster? And if you do it wrong, if you do it wrong, there's no punishment. No. Enjoy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Speak about the our our tournament when you participate. Our screen. We, when we first started, we were asked to participate in a tournament, uh, Fonseca Cup, 
And uh, I have to tell you, it was pretty um, intimidating being with all these karate uh, people that have taken karate for a long time. We thought it would be intimidating, but there, there's a lot of patience here. These senseis who are world class have infinite patience. And so I've been in, I think, four tournaments, and it's an opportunity to compete against other people who also have Parkinson's. So <laughs> thank you. What's happening? So um, the question is, do we know what's going on when people are exercising in terms of dopamine function? And is there something we can see on MRI? Is there something we can see on DAT scan? Um, so that could probably be a two hour long talk. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot going on when people are exercising. Um, if we somehow had you exercising, like doing sort of a, you know, stationary bike while also in a functional MRI, we could probably see a lot going on, but we know that there is, it seems like you're sort of enhancing dopamine production potentially in some ways and sort of helping to build um, synapses and then increase sort of the neurotrophic growth factors, meaning that environment, sort of like all the juices that kind of help support brain health, um, those are sort of being enhanced by exercise, if that makes sense. There's a question. Right, so Exactly. So this is this is not the same as boxing. This is not the same as Tai Chi. Um, the data that I've shown you is, is sort of the data that we have so far as we've just gotten started. Um, so we do not have head to head comparison of karate versus boxing. I imagine this wonderful West Side Story sort of, you know, thing going on. Um, we don't have that yet. Um, but hopefully, you know, down the line, we can compare because I do, you know, we get asked that all the time is which one is better? Which one would you like to do? Right? Start with that one. And if you would like to alternate and do both, wonderful. Um, so we don't have that yet, but, but stay tuned. And the Tai Chi absolutely has, has benefits, but doesn't tend to have the aerobic benefits. And we know, especially for the neuroprotective angle, that seems to come from the aerobic piece. So all right, I think we will we'll probably take the rest of the questions at the next panel that's coming up. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. So in case you haven't noticed, the theme for this afternoon is exercise and keep moving. So today I would also like to welcome Kelly Martin and InspireFit to tell us a little bit about CrossFit training. <laughs> you want to you wanna put the, get the slides up? Oh, okay. Just go right here. Right here. Okay. How's everybody doing? Come on, guys, we can do better than that. We got the green light from the first doctor. I want everybody to say, when I say, how's everybody doing? I want everybody to say, we're doing great. Even if you're really not, just say it, okay? Let's shake the walls. How's everybody doing? One more time. How's everybody doing? One more time. Wait for it. How's everybody doing? Awesome, awesome. Well, it, it, it's very important uh, not only to speak loudly, but also to enunciate the words and speak clearly and distinctly. And one of the things I like to do to start off is a, a tongue twister. Okay, we use this a lot in, in our groups. And what I want you to do is I want you to follow along and try to speak as mostly as articulately as you can and distinctly. So just follow along with me and repeat after me, okay? To sit in solemn silence. To sit in solemn silence. Oh, wait, what is it again? That's it. All right, let's try it again. To sit in solemn silence. To sit in solemn silence. In a dull, dark dock. In a dull, dark dock. In a pestilential prison. In a pestilential prison. With a lifelong lock. With a lifelong lock. Awaiting the, sensation Awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shot, short, sharp shot. On, a cheap and chippy chopper. on a cheap and chippy chopper 
with a big black block. Big black block. Nice work. Let's do it one more time a little faster. All right, here we go. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shot on a cheap and chippy chopper with a big black block. Nice job, guys. Way to go. Awesome. Awesome. So, again, I'm Kelly Martin. This is my partner, Nancy Timko. We own Inspire Fitness, Inspire CrossFit, which is an exercise facility in Willowbrook, Illinois. We've been open a little over two years. Um, it's a full-service CrossFit gym, which many of, uh, of our Parkinson's athletes partake in. But we also have uh, Parkinson's division exercise. And we currently train about... Yeah, it's an old slide. We currently train over 100 people with Parkinson's disease at every level and every stage. Um, so we offer small group classes as well as private training, as well as we're a rock steady boxing facility as well. And it, it's kind of a mix what people uh, choose. Some people do the rock steady in the small group. Some people want to dive a little bit deeper into the rabbit holes of their symptoms and choose the private training. Um, we're also a two-time grant recipient from the National Parkinson's Foundation. So thank you, Jessica, who's here from the National Parkinson's Foundation. Um, we'll be kicking off uh, an online um, training program here very shortly that I'll talk a little bit about at the end. Um, so we're going to talk about today a few things. Okay, let's see things. So, oh, hold on. So we're going to talk a little bit today about, and we're going to come back to about training on the bad days. And I don't think it's, is it one more day? Okay, there we go. So training on the bad days. Um, and we all know what that is. Everybody here has had those bad days where, you know, the list of symptoms, anxious, can't move very well, all the symptoms are kind of magnified, and you know, that's a big deal. But when it comes to exercise, we really need to, you know, to the best of our ability, work through these bad days. And that's very important, okay? It's very important to try to work through these bad days. And we're going to give you some exercises today um, for mobility, balance, strength, and stuff that you should be doing every day along with your Fonseca Karate, your rock steady Boxing, your Tai Chi, all of that. So we're going to give that to you today. But first, I kind of want to go off script here. And, and this is going to be really fun. Um, I want to recognize some people in the audience that exercise at our facility um, and kind of push them a little bit and have them demo what they do on a daily basis. So the first person I want to talk about is um, Otto Ron. And she came to us about a year and a half, two years, about two years ago, uh, severely deconditioned, sorry, Ada, severely deconditioned, um, really couldn't get into our facility without the help of a wheelchair. Um, but she had just a fighting spirit, great will, and just put in the work and the time. Well, as it turns out, Ada and Omai, her partner, liked to go to the opera. And they had to stop doing that. They were season ticket holders. So we got her up and running. We got her back to the opera. And then one day, recently, they were going to see an opera that they really wanted to see. So they got to, you know, Chicago. I don't even know what it's called. What is it called? Out of the Opera House? or Lyric Opera, right. So they get to the parking garage and realize that, oh, my, had forgotten her walker and her cane. So now she has nothing, Right. So she has two choices, right? One, I can't do this. I'm going to go home. Or two, I've been training for this. I have the confidence in my ability, and let's do it. Let's just do it. Now, that's no small feat to come from Monroe Garage to walk up across Michigan Avenue. You only have a certain amount of seconds to get by, but they did it. 
And that was a big confidence builder for her. And they, they made it back as well, as you can see. So what I'm going to have Ada do is just give me, and I want to work with her a little bit. I want her to give me 10 hands-free chair squats. So I'm just going to go over there real quick. You guys just want to turn it. Come on, Ada. I'm not here to brag about my people, but I want everybody to stay fighting. push up oh thank you a hand release push up is basically a push up so you lower yourself to the ground release the hands from the ground push yourself back up so Kev let's do it I know we're going up <laughs> Trisha's got 30 to do all right Kev let's do it 25 hand release push ups you got this no straighten a row this is what we talk about we all know exercise is good intense exercise is better let's go come on one, got to help him count. Two, 
Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, keep going, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, five more, come on, 21, 22, come on, 23, 24, 25, nice. <laughs> I, I could do this all day, I, I really could, this is great. Nice job, buddy, nice work, nice work. Okay, we're, all, we're almost wrapping this up, okay. The next athlete we have is, her name is Trish O'Neill. Um, she's a, a cross, she participates in the CrossFit that we have at the gym. She did the CrossFit Open and finished 21st in her age group worldwide. Okay. So she's a stud, right? So we're going to. Everyone worldwide. Yeah, everyone worldwide. Everyone. So we're going to have her do, I originally said 30 prisoner jump squats. That's okay. So I, I think I'm going to up that number, number to 35. Prisoner jump squats. All the way down. Big jump. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go, Trish. We've got to count them out. Big jumps. One, two, three, four. All the way down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Woo! Nice job. We have a bunch more athletes, but we don't have enough time. That was awesome, Trish. Way to go. I'm going to bring up uh, Sean here. He does a rock steady, and I was going to bring the focus mitts, but I forgot. So, what? Yeah, we forgot the gloves, too. So, I'm just going to have him run through just a couple uh, punching progressions that we do with the focus mitts. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Nice job, John. Here we go. All right. I just had to show you. These are the same people that fight the same fight that you all do. You guys are doing a great job. It's just important to keep moving. So, we talked about the importance of training on the bad days and working through, through those, everything that you see in front of you. So, we know that the exercise, as we saw from Dr. Jory and all the doctors before, how important it is for the exercise to treat those symptoms, to retrain the brain, balance and mobility. We're going to show you that today. Um, so we're going to have my trusty colleague here, Nancy, run through. And here we have the top skills again. We're going to have you run through uh, a mobility drill that you should be doing every morning when you wake up, every morning, okay? So first, okay. we're gonna start with neck tilts and we're just gonna run down the joints. See, we're tilting the neck side to side, nice straight back. Join in with me. Yeah, you can join in, neck tilt side to side. Good, and now from here, we're going to roll the shoulders back, nice and big. 
you can't, some shoulder impediment issues, you can just shrug. Or try to roll them back. That's it. Now we're going to roll them forward. Okay? <laughs> That's it. Now we're going to do the wrists. Let's everybody do the wrists. Make big little circles with the wrists. That's it. Now go the other way. Reverse the direction. Good. And now let's do fingers. See the fingers. Open them wide. That's it. Good. Now we're going to place our hands on our legs, and we're going to do what I call spine swirls. So we're going to pick a direction and swirl the spine around. This one feels really good, really good. So keep swirling that around as best you can. Try to get that good lean forward, too, if you can. That's important. Now we're going to rever reverse direction. Go the other way. That's it. Now we're going to come back to center, and we're going to go side to side. Hold the hands out. Go side to side. Nice bend. Perfect. You guys look great out there. See a lot of moving bodies. That's good. Then from here... We're just going to, we're going to move the knees in and out, kind of get them working. You can see, move the knees in and out. There you go. That's it. And figure about 30 seconds for each one of these exercises. And then we're going to come to center again. We're going to scoot back in the chair a little bit. We're going to extend the ankles and do some ankle circles. That's it. And then we're going to reverse that direction, go the other way. That's it. And then we're going to plant our feet back down. We're going to do some heel-toe, heel-toe. Just rotate between heel-toe. That's it. And then from here, we're going to go right into some knee extensions. Extend the knee. That's it. Again, we can pick 30 seconds of each of these. We can do 20 reps apiece. Whatever you're feeling. Great way to start the morning, though. And then from here, we're going to do some high knees. That's it. And then you just finish with three deep breaths on your own count. Three deep breaths. Yep. And breathe out. That's it. And good. All right. So... One of the things we always talk about with Parkinson's is balance. So we're going to go ahead and show you a couple drills that you can do at home to avoid falls, improve mobility, and improve that confidence. So I'm going to have Nancy stand up. And I think you're probably better off going maybe against this wall. I don't think we can see you. So it's important if you're, if you're going to try these, especially these at home, that you do them against a wall or have a caregiver or significant other watch you, have a chair next to you so that you can grab onto it if you feel yourself going out of balance. So the first thing we're going to do is simply a one foot static hold. So we're going to raise a foot, hold that for 30 seconds, try to release our hand from the chair, hold that. So say we're at 30 seconds and we Yep. And then we're going to switch feet. Okay. Switch feet, hold that. And it's okay. You don't have to stand there like a concrete statue. If your ankle is moving, that's good. You want that. Okay. You don't want to be so stiff that if, Oh, I'm just, I'm falling. You want to have that active ankle that's kind of supporting you and, and making you balance on one foot. So now we're going to progress that up a little bit here. And we're going to go to a one foot static hold with arm presses. Now, if you can master this, you're doing really well. So you're on one foot and you're simply pressing up. Okay. That gets too easy. Put a couple soup cans in your hands or some dumbbells. 
Okay. Very good. Switch feet. You'll notice that one foot is a little bit harder than others. It's normal. And if you notice that, always try to do that one first. Okay, good. So now we're going to do what's called a split stance. And for this one, it's good a lot of times with this one if you have two chairs like this. Or if you at least have one chair and somebody like there or that can catch you. So a split stance is just going to be putting one foot, so you got your left foot here, and then you're going to put your right heel on top of that one and hold that, okay? So we're going to hold that for 30 seconds. And then if we want to progress that up, we're going to add a clock tower. Good. We're going to hold that for 30 seconds. Then we're going to switch hands, hold that. Good. Then we're going to switch feet. Let's go back to just that single static hold, no arms. Yep. And then let's do a clock tower on that side. And then switch. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. So those are some balanced stuff that you need to be doing every day at home. Very important. Strength. Ada demonstrated that for us today. We start with that basic squat, okay? So one of the drills I, I like to do before we do this is go ahead and pull your feet out straight. Okay, now I just want you to slide down your legs. So you'll just roll your hands down your legs, try to stretch out that back. We want a mobile back when we try this. What we don't want to happen is we want to get out of the habit of this. Okay, where we're, we're trying to get up and we're just we're pushing up. We can't seem to get out of the chair, okay? We need to lean forward, be able to lean forward. So this is stretch, it's gonna help with that. We need to be able to lean forward, Get our nose over our toes. I like to say chin over the toes. Push yourself away from the chair. Pull in the knee. So why don't you give us a couple of those, Nance? Good. Good. And cross your legs or your arms over your chest like this. Right? Good. See how she's getting that good lean forward? She's leaning forward on the way up, but on the way down, she's also bending her hips. That puts her in a great position to go right into that next chair squat. Okay? Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. We talk about strength and balance. Um, I want to show you one here that kind of accomplishes both. And I think what we'll do is we'll do it right here, Nancy. It's called a bird dog push-up. So we're going to start on the wall. Counter in the kitchen is great. That's, we'll start with the wall. If this is easy, we'll move down, okay? So go ahead. We're going to do a push-up on the wall. And then we're going to raise opposite arm, opposite leg. We're going to hold that for a second. Then we're going to return our foot down, do a push-up, raise opposite arm, opposite the other side. Okay? And then back down. Do another push-up. Let's do a few more on your own count. Just keep doing them. You want to make sure when you're doing them that you, after every bird dog, you're not walking your feet up to show them how you would walk your feet up. Then you do another push up. Then you do this and then you walk your foot up. Suddenly you're standing straight up. So you got to be cognizant to keep your feet back on every rep. Okay. Now, as Nancy was saying, if this gets easy or too easy, move to a countertop. If that gets too easy, move to a lower surface until you're able to do it in a regular push-up position and raise that opposite arm, opposite leg. That takes a lot of core strength and a lot of balance. But if you try it, keep doing it every day, you'll get there. Um, the other one I want to talk about, yeah. I've got like two minutes. Oh, geez. crap. Okay. Yeah, we'll go quick. All right. So, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, on a chair. The next one is mobility and strength. So we're going to try that. I, I call it knees over ball, but we're, we're talking about um, putting our feet together, turning yourself to the side of the chair, then lifting up, placing your legs on the other side. 
back down, get that forward lean, and over, okay? This exercise is great. It helps you get in and out of bed, get in and out of cars. So we want to become proficient at this. Even if you can't do it or you can't get that high, keep trying. Or your feet come apart or this and that. Keep working at it. We have people that pick this up right away. We have people that takes months to get. Ada can do it. Everybody here can do it. But this is a great exercise. Okay, leg swings real quick. So leg swings is great. Grab a chair, swing the leg, great mobility drill. Okay, great. Do the other side. Yep, swing the leg, just pick 20 reps per piece. Now we're just going to kind of, so what do we do with all this? So we start with the warm up. We're going to put it all together. So Nancy, go ahead. Give me 10 chair squats. Okay, 10 chair squats. So we're going to start with the squats. This is how we put all this together in a routine. Okay. 10 chair squats. Good. 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 And 10 knees over ball. So we'll just be here. You can place an object that you can move those knees over. So we'll do that 10 times. And we'll get your emails if you want a written copy of this. We have this. So we'll do 10 of those. That's good, Nancy. Then we're going to hop up here, do 10 bird dog push-ups. Boom. And the less rest you have in between these exercises, the better, right? That improves your fitness. So this is stuff you can do at home. Great exercise. Yep, that's it. That's good. And then we would go right into the static balance, the one foot. Go right into that. I like to do balance after you've pre-exhausted your body a little bit, makes it a little bit harder. So we'll do that. Then we'll go in, yep, our, right into our presses. Then we go right into our clock towers, split stance, boom. And then the other side, good. And then we finish with 20 leg swings a piece, okay? So I just want, real quick, we have an online program that we're kicking off, the help of the uh, NPF. So. Uh, just get in touch with us, give us your email, and we will include you on that. Thank you so much for having us today, and uh, thank you, Lucy, for having us. All right, guys, take care. Thank you. Um, we're going to go into our question and answer series. I'd like for the uh, presenters to please take the stage, and any questions on any part? Does anybody have any? Raise them up. Um, so the question was um, that I showed the slide about the treadmill exercise, but if you have Parkinson's and balance problems or balance problems with your Parkinson's, you should not do treadmill exercise, right? Um, and I think the answer depends on each individual person and what's going on and probably who's with you and the training on using the treadmill. Um, certainly there are folks, uh, I know like at Shirley Ryan, um, former rehab institute, right? They get a lot of people up on a treadmill doing amazing things who, you know, shouldn't be on a treadmill, right? But, you know, with appropriate supervision and assistance, probably can get on a treadmill. But I think starting with, you know, having a trainer, having someone, a therapist there with you to say what's safe, what's not safe, and then building off. Good question. Um, 